JWST just found a mega structure older than the universe. Despite a story about a hoax scientific hypothesis that went viral in August, which misrepresented astrophysicist quotations to support a false narrative that the Big Bang didn't occur, the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, has not refuted the theory of the Big Bang. Even though the James Webb Space Telescope has only been conducting scientific operations for a few months, it has already made some significant discoveries, such as the identification of what may be some of the earliest galaxies ever seen, which were formed just 200 million years after the Big Bang. Despite the possibility that some of these galaxies are closer than initially believed due to instrument calibration concerns, the JWST has almost probably smashed the record with some of them. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we will be taking a look at what James Webb Space Telescope found in the expanding universe. Make sure to stick till the end of this video, as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. The largest, most costly, and most powerful telescope NASA has ever built was launched into space on Christmas Day. The James Webb Space Telescope will fly into space and travel almost a million miles from Earth to its orbit. The telescope will spend five to ten years examining the evolution of our solar system, the formation of the oldest galaxies in the universe, how they differ from modern galaxies, and whether life exists on other planets. NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency collaborated to develop the Webb Telescope. The Next Generation Space Telescope, under which it was first developed, was renamed in September 2002 after James Webb, the head of NASA in the 1960s, who helped launch the Apollo program that led to the moon landing. The project ended up costing $10 billion due to multiple delays and setbacks, including a redesign in 2005. The Webb Telescope underwent extensive testing before being cleared for launch after finishing construction in 2016. As an infrared telescope, the Webb Telescope searches for objects in space using infrared radiation. Celestial objects that are too cool or too dim to be seen in visible light, or what the human eye can see, such as stars, nebulae, and planets, can be observed via this method. Despite the fact that gas and dust appear opaque to the human sight, infrared radiation can actually travel through them, according to NASA. The Hubble telescope, on the other hand, can view visible light, ultraviolet light, and near-infrared light. The Webb telescope aims to accomplish four things. Earliest, researchers aim to understand how the first stars and galaxies it created following the Big Bang. Because light is stretched as it travels across the universe and turns into infrared, which cannot be seen with the naked eye, people normally wouldn't be able to observe this. The Webb Big Bang will basically be able to see back in time thanks to an infrared telescope's ability to detect this light, which has been moving toward Earth for more than 13 billion years. This leads to the second phase of the project, which involves contrasting the galaxies of the past and the present. Thirdly, because infrared radiation can examine astronomical dust that is invisible to visible light telescopes like Hubble, the Webb Telescope will be able to investigate how stars and planetary systems, including our solar system, evolved, according to NASA. Last but not least, the telescope will investigate planets beyond of our solar system to see whether they exhibit any signs of life or if their atmospheres are suitable for supporting life. There were 344 single-point failures or actions that had to be successful for the mission to be successful, according to a study produced by an independent review board in 2018. Around 7.20 a.m., the telescope was placed inside the Ariane 5 rocket's nose and launched from the spaceport of the European Space Agency at French Guiana. After the launch, it came loose from the rocket and started to expand. The solar panels opened up so the telescope could receive electricity from the sun around 30 minutes after launch, according to NASA. The antenna will be deployed two hours later so that the telescope can communicate with Earth. Three days later, the sun shield, which measures 69.5 feet by 46.5 feet and is roughly the size of a tennis court, will be deployed. The temperature inside must be kept at minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit or lower in order for the instruments to function. The telescope is shielded from the sun's heat, and the equipment are kept cool by the sun's shield. The mirrors will begin to unfold and latch into position to reflect light after that. The telescope's total travel time to its destination, where it will settle into an orbit approximately 1 million miles from Earth, is 29 days. The Big Bang Theory is simple and unmistakably misunderstood. 
The name of the expanding universe we observe, the Big Bang, is seriously misleading. The universe appears to be boundless and is seen to be expanding. With a center, a firecracker bursting at a specific time and location is how the moniker Big Bang is meant to be understood. No center can be found for the universe. The Big Bang was a process that took place in time rather than a single point in space and occurred everywhere at once. We are able to infer this from two observations. One, galaxies are moving away from one another rather than toward a central point. And two, the cosmos is uniformly heated due to early time heat. Is the Big Bang visible? No, we cannot observe the Big Bang itself. After the universe started expanding 13.8 billion years ago, we can still observe the heat that existed at that time, which was around 380,000 years ago, which is what we refer to as the Big Bang. The universe and the sky are both filled with this heat. With satellites we developed called the Cosmic Background Explorer, or COBE, the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP, and Planck, we were able to map it, and it still does. The only temperature variations at this time were very slight, and the cosmos were incredibly smooth. Though the JWST will undoubtedly see further back than Hubble, COBE, WMAC, and Planck, the goal of the JWST was not to observe the universe's origins, but rather a previously unobserved period in its history. We are especially interested in seeing the first items that emerged as the cosmos began to cool down following the Big Bang. In comparison to the time frame that COBE, WMAP, and Planck were designed to observe, that time frame may be hundreds of millions of years later. We hypothesize that the minute temperature waves they noticed were the germs from which galaxies eventually developed. The exact moment the first stars and galaxies formed in the universe, as well as how they were created, are unknown. To help with the answer, we use JWST. Why is Hubble unable to observe the birth of the earliest stars and galaxies? We must cast our gaze very far out in order to glimpse back in time to when these items were formed. The feeble heat signals from these remote objects cannot be detected by Hubble because it is not large enough or cold enough to do so. Why do we desire to see the birth of the first stars and galaxies? The first generation of stars following the Big Bang were the first to synthesize the chemical components of life. They brought us to where we are now, and we want to know how that happened. Although we don't know, we have theories and projections. The early stars must have had some sort of impact on our own history, starting with agitating everything and generating the other chemical elements besides hydrogen and helium. We must thus measure what occurred at the beginning if we are to understand where our atoms came from and how the little planet Earth became capable of hosting life. And that's going to end today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please make sure you like it and share it with all your friends and family and others who are interested in the cosmos who are in your inner circle. Please subscribe also and leave a comment down below your own thoughts, and we'll see you in our next video. Thanks for watching.